same here. I can give all the tools and instructions, but you have to deal with that emotional, hormonal dump, that focus, that fear. That... So it, it's a beautiful moment of self-discovery and evolution. You've just made a huge change in your neurological makeup. Alright, hey, welcome back to the channel, and this is another one of those videos where I go through my full day of eating. I wake up early around 5 to 6 a.m., and what I do immediately is drink some water. I also add a pinch of sea salt into it to, you know, balance my electrolytes and reduce cortisol because I'm going to be fasting for a long period of time and I don't want to, you know, develop some electrolyte imbalances or to become too stressed out. And I keep drinking just water until noon time. All right, so it's around 1 p.m. and it's time for my coffee. By this time, I've been fasting for about 15 or 16 hours with absolutely zero caloric intake. I keep my caffeine intake quite low because I don't like the jolt and the jittery I get, you know, if you consume too much caffeine. So this is a low caffeinated coffee, basically. And the second reason why I don't drink coffee any sooner than 1 p.m. is that it's the perfect time for consuming caffeine. Cortisol has just reached its low point and I'm not gonna develop, you know, caffeine intolerances because of it. It's the best time for drinking coffee. To that I say, alright, alright, alright. And yes, sometimes I also take a 20 minute power nap in the afternoon to keep myself fresh. After that I drink some apple cider vinegar. It's great for fasting because it reduces inflammation and it can also boost fat burning. Not, not burning fat literally, but it will just, you know, it will promote ketone production. If you can't stand the taste of vinegar, then you can add some sparkling water to it. It will make it almost like a cocktail or some sort of a drink, it's quite nice. And I also add some extra pink Himalayan salt for some more magnesium. Because you don't want to get mineral deficient when you're doing intermittent fasting. It's one of the biggest mistakes actually people make. They don't replenish their electrolytes and they're afraid of salt. Especially if you're doing the ketogenic diet, then you should especially consume more salt. Because once you stop eating carbohydrates, then your body will flush out the electrolytes and you need to replenish them. I don't know about you, but I actually kind of like the taste of apple cider vinegar. It's this acidic and it's quite, it has a strong taste, but it's nice. What I also add to the drink is some creatine monohydrate. Creatine is useful for recruiting more muscle fibers when you're exercising or your, when you're working out. But it also has some cognitive enhancing benefits, so you should definitely add it to your diet. And of course, to get even more micros, I consume vitamin D3, fish oil and L-carnitine. If you're doing these extended fasts or one meal a day, then you should take some supplements during the day as well. Alright, alright, alright. Because I'm not trying to lose weight and I'm actually working out quite hard, then I'm going to take a small protein shake during my workout. It consists of a half a scoop of whey protein, some MCT oil, and I also take some chaga mushroom. Chaga is a very powerful antioxidant. It's not going to boost my performance when I'm working out, but it will definitely, you know, increase my longevity and enhance my cognition at the same time. All right, all right, all right. And the reason why I take this protein shake isn't because that I couldn't work out without it. It's just that I can, you know, push myself even further with it. And it's going to promote protein synthesis post-workout. And if I'm going to combine it with training in a fasted state, then I'm going to create an even greater anabolic response afterwards. And behaving differently can also mean thinking differently. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go and do something in the physical world. Maybe it changed the way that you read books. Or it changed the way that you think about beliefs. All right, in the actual workout, I'm starting off with some heavier exercises like the handstand push-ups. I'm gonna superset them immediately with some pull-ups. We need more of this in our lives. It's uncomfortable, but this creates huge changes. It's, it's, it's an arrow. Discomfort and fear is an arrow. It's here. It's, this is where the gold is. X marks the spot. It's here, but we go with the pleasure. That's not where the arrow points. And that eventually is not pleasurable anymore, and it kind of can destroy our lives. But where our fear resides, this is where real growth is, and, and discomfort and pain is part of it. Thank you. Well, you know, lack of movement and 
people to try to bring this uh, movement to the public and to make people join us. And in total, I do about five to six sets of these supersets, about 10 to 15 handstand push ups and 10 to 15 pull ups. Luckily, I have this wooden bar underneath my ceiling where I can hang my gymnastics rings and where I can do pull ups from. It's quite amazing. Then I'm gonna continue on with ring push-ups. These are quite difficult because you have to stabilize your entire body and it puts a lot of stress on the elbows. The gymnastic rings are the most difficult exercises for the upper body. After the strength component of my workout, I continue on with some metabolic conditioning. Most of the time I do high intensity interval training with either some kettlebells, burpees or sprints. I don't do a lot of low intensity cardio because it isn't nearly as effective as HIT or Tabata. This time I went all out with this 40 pound dumbbell for 5 minutes and I did maybe 100 to 150 kettlebell swings. And it's gonna make you sweat like crazy because it's very intense, but it's very time efficient. Tense. And it's a perfect way to finish off with some hypertrophy work. And of course I train my legs as well, even though I'm doing mostly bodyweight exercises. My room is like the jungle where I do my writing, where I work out, where I meditate, where I take naps. It's the jungle. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. And that's practically my entire workout that doesn't take me a lot of time to finish. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and it's the perfect time to continue on with the actual dinner that I'm going to have. But before that, you know the drill, you know what's gonna happen. Before I actually eat any calories, I will consume some more apple cider vinegar. This time I also add some lemon juice because the citric acid is particularly good for digestion. All right, now the actual food. I'm gonna start off with some ton of salad. I try to incorporate a variety of greens and salads into my diet because, because it's very important for maintaining good gut health. And one of the biggest mistakes people make on the ketogenic diet is that they don't eat enough vegetables. They eat only like broccoli or iceberg lettuce or something like that. Iceberg lettuce is completely useless, but you can't just eat these greens. You need some fat, you need some healthy fats, and that's why I'm gonna add some olive oil. Don't forget the vinegar. It's actually quite nice if you get used to it. But I definitely recommend you to start drinking it, you know, because it doesn't matter how many macros or how many how many grams of protein or how many grams of fat you eat if if your gut is still messed up, you know. Your gut produces like 70% or so of your serotonin. Serotonin is the relaxation hormone, you know, it directly influences how you feel, how your brain functions and, and not only that, you know, inflammation is also one of the greatest predictors of aging. So if you want to live longer, if you want to build muscle, burn more fat and think more clearly, then you have to reduce inflammation. You know, there are different tra tactics for it, but apple cider vinegar is probably, you know, one of the easiest ways of doing so. Other, other such strategies are, you know, intermittent fasting, cold thermogenesis can also be exercising, the ketogenic diet, and uh, spices like ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, those are all like very anti-inflammatory, but apple cider vinegar is also, you know, great for it, so... Bottoms up! Alright, alright, alright. Okay, this is what the salad finally looks like. I also added some pickles, some cucumbers and some sour cream. And for the protein, I had some leftover omelette with maybe 6 to 8 eggs, some bacon, onions and paprika mixed into it. And with my food, I of course take some more supplements, some spirulina or chlorella tablets, some B vitamin B6, magnesium, zinc. And that day, I also took some ashwagandha for my cognition. On top of that I ate 4 Brazil nuts to get my selenium needs for the day. You shouldn't actually eat any more than 5 Brazil nuts a day because you might get some selenium poisoning. It's not gonna kill ya but it might cause some nausea or some irritability in your gut. And as the last part of the meal I had some Baltic herring, some fried local fish 
with good omega-3 fatty acids and DHA which is necessary for your brain and a tomato. Tomato. This is actually what my average day of eating looks like. It's not rocket science. It's simple. I have a free ebook called Simple Keto for you to check out if you're interested. But other than that, click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Thanks for watching. My name's Seam. Stay alright. Stay empowered. Ah, alright, alright, alright.